moment of truth. Everything is assembled, tires are on, time to lower it to the ground for the very first time in over two months. Hopefully the tack welds uh, hold. So here we go. In today's video, we're gonna be buttoning up the SLA front suspension on the Mustang. We're gonna build a coilover mount using this contraption. And by the end of this video, the car is gonna be on the ground and it's gonna be a roller again, hopefully. Now let's get to work. Welcome back to another video. I've made a lot of progress on the front suspension of the Mustang. A quick recap from the last video. In the last video, I modified the stock K-member. I added in the suspension points for the lower control arms. I cut off the spring perch to just narrow it up a little bit and give enough room for the upper control arms. Since then, I've painted it Ford blue, uh, just to give another a little bit extra color to the car. Black is so ordinary. And then some other cool colors are already taken by some other companies on the market, but I had some four blue left over. The, the K member was like a mixture of red and gray from the car being red and then me painting the engine bay gray. So it's all one uniform color now. I think it looks really good. The front lower control arm, uh, if you remember in the last video, it just went up and down. There was nothing to control uh, rear or front movement. So I've put on, I got this in finally. This is uh, like a, just a threaded rod. This is 10 inches long from a Weir's machine. So this will control the forward to back. So I can basically help control my caster with, uh, with this one. Now for the upper control arm mounting, uh, this is the one that I have been using. I have had to modify it some. So this is Rev1. It looks very basic, not very exciting looking. And this is Rev2. So I've cut in some uh, little designs in there basically to help remove some weight out of it and not reduce any of his uh, structural, but it just also makes it look a little bit better. I put some uh, tabs on here to help kind of align and hold it. So that's something that was not on the Rev1 that I talked about. And I've also done a little more of a cutout in here where so I had to manually do that. That's to help clear the upper control arm. So I've had that designed in there now. And then the other thing you'll notice is I've gone from four holes to three holes in here. And I just, I didn't need all that uh, adjustability in there. And I've changed it up a little bit of how I'm doing it. So before the bolt just went through there and that's all that there was. So now, the bolt will go through here, but the bolt, it can actually go in between these easily so I can adjust it without actually taking this whole bracket off the car, which is gonna be nice. And then a sleeve will basically go in there to lock it in its, uh, in its positions. And I could try to show that a little bit later. I don't, they're laying around here somewhere, but that is one uh, thing that I changed up a little bit on this uh, front control arm bracket. It still has uh, six degrees factor it in here and we can skip holes. We can be in like the first hole and the second hole in this one to get a little bit more angle for any dive if we need it. I think uh, six here and then first to second hole would be nine degrees. Now that I have the lower control arms and upper control arms all figured out, I can move into figuring out how to mount up the coilover. I was going to do like a tower that comes off of the upper control arm mount that will then hold the coilover and that's what other companies and other people have done but I saw something really cool that I wanted to try out. So starting off with, this is just a tool from Speedway Motors. This will allow me to set it to different heights to get the coilover mounting all figured out without actually having the coilover in there. Uh, this bottom mount is from Kaiser Manufacturing. It's just a basic coilover mount. But this one up here is the, the new design that I'm trying out that I've seen a few other things. And this is uh, pretty popular in circle track racing. So that's kind of where I saw pictures of it, but this is from Brian's engineering and it's a clevis on a threaded rod that then has a threaded tube up here. So this threaded tube would get welded to the, the frame of the car. And then you can just spin this rod and you can adjust the height 
of the of the car basically you can raise or lower it it has basically one to two inch adjustment there but what it's really used for and that i'm going to use it for is setting the corner balance so the corner weights i'll be able to set the coil over to the height that i want to get the the proper uh, compression and extension on it but then i can go in and do fine adjustments up here to set my corner weights to try to get that side to side and 50 weight balance if uh, possible, or, you know, close as close as we can get. Uh, but I won't have to take apart the whole suspension, adjust the coilover, put it back together, check it, redo it if I have to. I could just go in from the top of the car. Uh, it's just a square three eighths uh, ratchet adjustment in there, and I'll be able to raise and lower the car so that's pretty cool so we need to get that figured out and I, i'm going to have it going up to the stock location for uh the struts because that's strong there that's what it was for and it kind of lines up pretty well of making it to uh, to that distance uh, up there so we'll need to figure that out for now let's get this all installed back on the car and get this uh get the coilover mounting figured out. I figured this would be a good opportunity to show the little sleeve bushings that I was talking about earlier. So you just pull that out and I can move this up anywhere I want it, push that sleeve back in, and now it's locked into that position. It'll be basically clamping force that holds the upper control arm to the bracket anyways. These sleeves aren't gonna be taking that much uh, load either uh, vertically or horizontally is all going to be clamping force that holds the upper control arm to the bracket. All right, to get you caught up to speed real quick, everything is pretty much assembled in here. Up in the strut tower is this plate. The threaded sleeve is welded into that hole up there, and then the clevis is threaded in. I have the suspension tool in here, and I'm kind of trying to figure out where to place the, the lower mount. So ideally, you want to try to place it as close to the ball joint as possible. That will give you kind of the, the best uh, motion ratio. But something that I need to consider is the, the coil spring on here. So I don't want the upper arm mainly to contact the, the coil over when it's under either compression or uh, rebound. So I need to basically try to measure that all out and figure it, figure out the, the best place to, to mount that. And that will determine my motion ratio. And then from that, I can kind of determine what spring rate I should be running for this. I know for the, for like a strut car, basically 350 to 400 is kind of what I was target, going to be targeting uh, if I went coil over with, uh, for that setup, for this setup, it will be a little bit different just because of the motion ratio. The motion ratio for the stock arm or the stock uh, location of the spring is really low, I guess you should say. It's not uh, close to 100, it's much lower. I think it's like 25% or something like that because the spring you know, is way inboard. So that's why you run a much higher spring rate opposed to when you switch over to coil over is basically good as the motion ratio. So the coil, the, or the spring that I had in there was like a thousand pound per inch one, uh, where uh, out here it would be more like uh, 400 or something like that. So somewhere in, mid, in the middle might be, uh, will be a little bit different. I think I want to kind of go maybe a little softer in the front than I was before and try to make up with it maybe with a sway bar or something like that just to for it to be a little bit better over the bump so one of the sites that I'll be running a, uh, a lot this year is getting a little bit of a washboard and has some bumps and the car was getting a little unsettled so I think I might drop the rear eventually also the rear I have like a 300 uh, pound per inch uh, coil over in there so I might drop that guy along with uh, maybe dropping this one a little bit when I get this all figured out but for right now I'm thinking right around here is pretty good which is 
put in this front edge 13 inches from the, the pivot point, and it's looking like I have plenty of room for the coil spring in here. Alternatively, I could, you know, try to move the top point inboard a little bit and move the outboard some out there, but this uh, angle of the coilover will also affect your motion ratio. So moving the top in and the bottom out has pretty much the same effect as just moving this bottom inboard a little bit and having leaving this uh, top one where it is. And if you don't know what motion ratio is, it's the ratio between how much the spring moves versus how much the wheel actually moves. So since the coilover is mounted inboard, a little bit of movement here equals a larger movement out at the at the wheel. And the coilover that I'm going with is a five inch stroke. So it only has five inches of stroke, but out here it will be much greater. And it looks like my motion ratio is about 0.8 right now, so 80%. So for every, you know, one inch here, it will be 1.8 inches out here. I think that's how the math will work out. So let me go ahead and get this tacked in here and that will make this side pretty much done, I think. And now I just need to repeat all this for the other side and then we can get the car on the wheels, on the ground and kind of see how everything looks, how everything works. I have put the wheel on here and I've turned it uh, a little bit. I've had to extend out the, the tie rods on this and there is some movement that I have still on the inner tie rod. I'm not running out of threads quite yet, but it is starting to get a little bit uh, close, but I also don't know. I need to get the other side set up and see kind of where center is and figure, figure that all out. But at the moment, it's looking like I have plenty of clearance on this back side, depending on once I get that side put in and get the tie rods all figured out if I am gonna be contacting in here. I don't think I should be anymore since everything has moved out, but I was contacting the sway bar before, but hopefully I'm not doing that now or hitting this upper control arm now. So I need to get that all uh, buttoned up on that side so we get the wheel on and get that all figured out. One thing that I was a little concerned about as I was making the suspension, since I did not have the fender all on there was if I'm actually building this where I want it, i.e. not too far back, too far forward where I'm gonna be hitting the fender. And I still don't really know because I don't have the fender on there, but I put a tape measure down and have tried to measure out kind of the wheelbase. And I am pretty close to still uh, uh, factory. So factory is 101.3 and it's looking like I am a little over 101, less than 102. So I think I'm still pretty close to uh, to factory, which is good. I do have quite a bit of adjustment still into the suspension. Uh, the There's slots on the upper control arm that it can move, which will then adjust my caster, but I can also move the, the lower control arm by just threading out this uh, sleeved rod or moving my pickup points a little bit. I do have uh, sleeves in there. So I can move things kind of forward or back a little bit and up and down, obviously. But I think I've actually designed this correctly as much as possible for not really knowing quite what I'm doing, but this has been a really fun learning experience, but I need to get the other side done so we can get this car on the ground. We are so close and let me jump on that. Okay, moment of truth. Everything is assembled, tires are on, time to lower it to the ground for the very first time in over two months. Hopefully the tack welds uh, hold. So here we go. Some creaking, but I think, I think it looks good. No jack stands. The car is obviously has no suspension. It's all all solid at the moment, but this is looking really sweet. All right, so track width is looking like it's gonna be 
you know, roughly 75 to 76 inches. Uh, I do need to get a, a, a slightly longer uh, tie rod uh, piece in there to extend this out. That's uh, still quite towed, towed in, but let's take a look at this side. So, as I said, it's poking quite a bit out and that is even with my uh, little bit of fender flare on there. So it's gonna be uh, a little bit wider than, than it was. And then looking at it from this angle, you can kind of tell that it's maybe just slightly forward. I think that used to be a little bit more uh, rearward, but it's just a, a little slightly forward, which isn't too bad. I could also adjust that I think with moving the, the upper arm and the lower arm uh, back if I wanted to, but I don't think it's a huge deal at the moment. We get to kind of see where, what happens with um, rubbing. So that looks like it's probably all the way turned in at the moment and I have plenty of room in between the sway bar and the upper control arm. And then plenty of room behind the control arm there as well. Plenty of clearance on the driver's side. So looking really good. There you have it. The car is on the ground under its own weight, uh, but there's still a lot to do as I mentioned. Hopefully the tax holds so all the so that means that pretty much everything is still just tacked together and I need to pull it all back apart, fully weld it out, and then we can, I think, get to final assembly. The only thing left that I need to um, put on there is a uh, mount for the sway bar. I'm just gonna use this sway bar that I had. So I just need to do a plate that kind of comes off, catches this lower length. That's super easy. So not really gonna go over that, but it will just be a piece of plate that comes out. I'll probably put some bends in it or some other things to uh, strengthen it up. Cause if you just have one plate out there, cantilevered, it's gonna break off. Uh, but that is all that is left to fabricate on there. Timing. So right now, this is the end of February, beginning of March, and I have already missed the deadline that I was shooting for. There was an event last weekend that I was hoping to have the car ready for to do a shakedown. Obviously did not make that. Um, I've signed up for an event at the end of the March. That's the next event. Uh, so I'm hoping to be ready for, for that one. I think it is still uh, is possible because that is basically a month away, maybe uh, slightly less, but still have the engine to finish up that, get that in there, just a few wiring things left on that, and then getting the suspension all welded and getting it painted and figured out in there. But in the next video, we are gonna be talking coilovers. So as I did this one, I only have the, the, the suspension uh, setup tool in there. So we need to get the coilover in there so we can get it uh, all set up. But suspension is good, but next video is coilovers. And I will tell you, they are very, very nice. Uh, so stay tuned and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you guys for watching, later.